Section 7.2, relating the characteristics of an exponential function to its equation. Okay, what we want to do is we want to predict the characteristics, things like x-intercept, increasing, decreasing, of an exponential function by looking at its equation. So we alluded to some of this in 7.1. So look at these three different functions. Which ones are exponential? Looking at this one, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 9, 4 to 16, 5 to 25. These are all perfect squares. So the equation is really just f of x equals x squared. That is not exponential. By definition, exponential means that the variable is in the exponent. So not exponential. This one, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 8, 4 goes to 16, and 5 goes to 32. Well, it looks like we're doubling each time. I think this one is f of x equals 2 to the power of x. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 2 is 4. 2 to the 3 is 8. Yep. So this one is definitely exponential. This next one, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, 4 to 4, 5 to 5. This, I believe, is just f of x equals x cubed, is it not? 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed, well 3 times 3 is 9 times 3, yep. So this is not exponential either. Okay, so again, exponential, the exponent's there. Um, there is a coefficient, in this case it's 1. And the number 2, neither of those are 0. This number is greater than 1. Greater than 0, there we go. Okay. So here's a table, the number of folds, the number of layers created. When we fold a piece of paper zero times, we have one layer of paper. When we fold it once, we have two layers, etc. So this is an exponential function, and its function is this. It can be used to predict the number of layers that will be given. So let's look at a couple things here. Graph this function. Okay, so what that looks like graphed is down here. When we look at the graph, we see it looks something like that. It has a y-intercept of, I believe that's 0.5. Is that 0.5? We'll see. Okay. Examine the table of values um, where the x value is increased by 1 each time. So a table of values was actually, sorry, right up here. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. We always increase by a factor of 2. And notice that that is a value right there. Okay. Examine the graph and table of values. Determine the y-intercept and state whether the graph is increasing or decreasing. Okay. So the y-intercept, when x equals 0, the y-intercept is 1. That looks better. So this y-intercept is actually 1. I don't know why they have a 0.5 right there. I'm not sure what they're doing. But that intercept is 1. And that intercept corresponds to this value right here. That's the y-intercept. Okay, and that makes sense because whenever you have 3 to the power of 0, 7 to the power of 0, 1,000 to the power of 0, that's always just 1. So it's going to be 1 times this value. So that's always going to give you, when you put 0 in for x, a y-intercept of that value. Okay, this is increasing function. As you move from left to right, values are getting bigger. Choose a new exponential function, graph it, and add to the table. So here's a couple things. f of x equals 1 to 2 to the x. We saw that the y-intercept was 1. It was increasing. Let's try f of x equals 2 times 5 to the power of x. Okay? So if I wanted to graph that, I would just go to Desmos, or if you have, actually I do it here, or if you have your own graphing calculator, you could do that. So again, we're graphing, what was it, 2 to the power, I've already skipped to the next one here, 2, 2 to the power of, I've opened this three times, that's no good, 2 times 5 to the power of x, there we go. I'm going to pause, okay. Here we have 2 to the power of x. Notice it is an increasing function, and its y-intercept is 2, or that value that's given right there. Interesting. 
Okay, the next thing it asks us to graph is 3 times 4 to the power of x. So some of you might see a pattern already. You might think, you might guess what the y-intercept is. Okay, look, that y-intercept is 3, um, and it as well, it is increasing. So we're seeing some patterns. Okay. Now, what if we did graphs that look like this? 2 times 1 third x. Let's try that. So we put 2 here. Oh, right away that y-intercept changes. And how does 1 third change the graph? Interesting. So now it's a decreasing function. Okay. Again, let's look. The next one is 5 times 1 fifth to the power of x. So some of you might say, <coughs> excuse me, well, 5 times 1 fifth is 1, so 1 to the power of anything is just 1. Isn't this a constant um, fraction function? Well, no, because uh, order of operations says we do exponents first. We do 1 fifth to the power of x first, then we times by 5. So that might be something that you guys were worried about, but don't worry. Still exponential. Okay, so 5 right away, look, my x-intercept or my y-intercept change and this is one fifth that we're putting in there. So again decreasing function and my last one was four times one half to the power of x. So I do one half. So look at one fifth and now I change it to one half and then I do the value of four there. So just change that y-intercept. Okay so um, a is greater than 0, B is between 0 and 1. So whenever we have a fraction as the B value or the value rate that the exponent is raised to, that makes it decreasing. My A value is going to make it make the Y intercept. Okay, so just to summarize that information, it's a bunch of questions to try. Um, in a table of values, there's a constant ratio between the consecutive y values when the x values are increased by the same amount. The value of this ratio is equal to the parameter b in the function y equals a b to the x, where b is not equal to 1. So what that says is in the table of values, you're going to keep seeing, this is the one we want to look at, you're going to keep seeing your y value go up by some constant ratio. Well, 1 times 2, 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, and that value is given right there. Okay. Um, in an exponential function of the form y equals, of the form y equals a b to the x, a is a non-zero multiplier and b is the base. The value of a is the y-intercept. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to give you graphs and you're going to have to match them. Okay, and so you're going to use the fact, well, is it increasing or decreasing? And is, um, and what's the y intercept? That's basically what you're going to do this section. An exponential function is increasing if a is greater than 0 and b is greater than 1. It is decreasing if a is greater than 0 and b is a fraction between 0 and 1. That's what that means. Changing the parameters with a and b an exponential function of the form y equals a b to the power of x, where a is greater than 0, b is greater than 0, b does not equal 1, does not change the number of x-intercepts, the end behavior, the domain, the range. These characteristics are identical in all exponential forms. Okay? So end behavior is always the same. x-intercepts, there's always none. End behavior, it always starts in 2 and ends in 1. Domain, any x value, Range is always bigger than zero. Y is always bigger than zero. Okay, so in a lot of ways, exponential is a little easier than polynomial because all of this stuff is the same. All we have to remember is how that y intercept is what makes the y intercept what it is and if it's increasing or decreasing.